Good morning everybody. I am Dr. Uday Kumar Khan. Today I am going to discuss about the experiment on electron spin resonance ESR spectroscopy. Electron spin resonance spectroscopy. And I am going to give you the demonstration on how to determine the magnetic field as a function of resonance frequency and how to determine the Landis G factor for free electrons. And before going into the experiment, we have to understand the basic principles of the experiment and the functioning of a ESR spectrometer. So this ESR spectrometer, electron spin resonance spectrometer works on the spinning property of an electron which is at resonance. Electron is a fermion has spin half. So if as the electron is a negatively charged particle, when it rotates about its own axis in the clockwise direction, then it gives rise to a magnetic moment, mu s, having direction along this when it rotates in the clockwise direction. And similarly, the same electron when it rotates and in anti-clockwise direction, then it generates magnetic moment in the opposite direction. And this magnetic moment is related or can be designated as the electron spin quantum number ms is equal to plus half and ms is equal to minus half. This case, when it rotates clockwise, then the magnetic spin quantum number ms is equal to plus half, and when it rotates anticlockwise, then the magnetic spin quantum number becomes minus half. This particular ESR spectroscopy has another name. This is called electron paramagnetic resonance spectrometer or the corresponding spectroscopy is called the electron paramagnetic resonance spectroscopy. And in this case, particularly, the substance we use should have one unpaired electron. So the material we are going to use should have an unpaired electron. So the ESR spectroscopy can be obtained with the paramagnetic material only. Now let me discuss about the working principle of the experiment we are going to do with the help of electron spin resonance spectrometer. So for that, suppose magnetic field along this direction H and one electron is having ms is equal to half state is revolving around the H with a frequency nu naught. This is called Larmor precision. So when one magnetic field is switched on in the vicinity of an electron, the electron rotates about the magnetic field with a frequency nu naught and this rotation is called the Larmor precision and the corresponding frequency nu naught is called the Larmor frequency and this Larmor frequency nu naught has the expression g e 4 pi m into h where G is the Landis G factor, E is the electronic charge, M is the mass of the electron and H is the field. 
Now, if another magnetic field which is having high frequency, suppose this is RF field, radio frequency field, is applied perpendicular to this H direction. So H is here, we are applying RF field in this direction. This RF has the frequency in the range something like 10 megahertz or so and if this frequency nu1 matches with this larmor frequency then resonance condition satisfies and the resonance occur and what happens is this electron goes to from ms is equal to plus half state it goes to ms is equal to minus half state so there is a spin flip so transition occurs from ms is equal to plus half state to ms is equal to minus half state and when this occurs this transition occurs at resonance then electron absorbs more energy from this radio frequency field and goes to the excited state and the energy difference between the two states each state has the energy like ems is equal to minus g mu b ms into h as i said earlier g is the landage factor ms is the spin state h is the field new term is mu b this is called the Bohr magneton so this transition corresponds to the energy difference delta e is equal to g mu b into h therefore to have electron spin resonance from spin up state to spin down state this condition should be satisfied nu1 is equal to nu0 and this energy difference delta E should be equal to H nu 1. So H nu 1 should be equal to G mu B into H or H is equal to H by G mu B into nu 1. So this is our working formula. So here what we can do is as our experiment is to determine the magnetic field as a function of resonance frequency. So this formula will be useful for us. This is the frequency of the RF field and this is the magnetic field. So to study the variation of magnetic field as a function of resonance frequency, we have to plot like this along x-axis, we will plot nu1, the frequency of the RF field and the corresponding resonance field will put along the y-axis and will get a straight line curve like this and this curve will have a slope of h by g into mu b so calculating the slope h by g mu b h is the Planck constant we know mu b is the Bohr magneton we know and the slope if we know so if it works like h by g mu b is equal to slope then g can be obtained so landage factor can be obtained from this study also so till now i have discussed the working principle of the experiment now we'll go to the details of the experiment so i need some blank space in the board this is the circuit we are going to use for our experiment this experiment was initially done by the great scientist Javoisky in 1945 and the sample he also used diphenyl picryl hydrazine DPPH it's a paramagnetic sample having 
one unpaired electron. So this circuit has two coils. This is the coil, it's called the Helmholtz coil. Helmholtz coil is to get the main H, H field as I showed you earlier. And this H field is driven by a current source. This is a sinusoidal wave of 50 Hz. And why we take this sinusoidal wave will be clear soon. Okay. The next part is the RF oscillator. This there is RF coil and the sample is kept inside the coil. This DPPH is kept inside the coil. This is RF oscillator. So RF signal of frequency some few megahertz comes from this oscillator. Then the signal we obtain due to the electron spin resonance, the absorption signal is detected with the help of a detector, it's a diode detector. And then this is the signal is amplified with the help of audio frequency amplifier and taken to the Y channel of CR, cathode ray oscilloscope or os oscilloscope. And this original signal goes to the Helmholtz coil is fed in the X channel of CRO. So in CRO, X and Y channel signals are there and to get the pattern, we have to adjust the phase between the two signals. So that's why we have a phase shifter here. For such simple and sensitive detection, we have the arrangement for modulation of Larmor frequency. So to have simple and sensitive detection, instead of taking a DC current for the Helmholtz coil, we are going to use a sinusoidal signal. So we are modifying the Larmor frequency at the rate of 50 Hz. And the signal seen in the oscilloscope is as follows. So this is the Helmholtz coil current, it's a sinusoidal wave. And when the Larmor frequency matches with the radio frequency, then so it happens four times in a full cycle of 50 Hz. So this whenever the frequency, Larmor frequency matches with the RF frequency, this is new one, this is new one. Basically this RF frequency, this signal is a linearly polarized. So this linear polarization can be considered two circular wave having different orientation, one clockwise, another is anticlockwise. So this frequency is new one, this frequency is new one, this frequency is new one. So this RF oscillator can be, RF signal can be considered as composition of right circularly polarized and left circularly polarized signal. Therefore, for the full cycle of the sweep, we have four peaks. Whenever this Larmor frequency matches with the RF frequency, so new one, new one, again new one, new one, so we have four peaks. So with the help of phase shifter, we can adjust to match the signals like one and two will be merged and then three and four will be merged. So instead of having four, we will have only two resonance peaks. So in the experiment to study the magnetic field as a function of resonance frequency, what we are going to do is this current in the Helmholtz coil will keep fixed around something like 
150 milliampere or so and then this frequency we have to tune so we'll start with frequency something like 12 megahertz or 13 megahertz and then we will change the frequency so for one particular RF frequency what we have to do is we have to look at the signals so first we will see the peaks in the CRO in YT mode and then we will go to the XY mode of the CRO and we will look at the two peaks and what we have to measure is what is the full stretch full length of this signal and then what is the separation between the two peaks uh, in the oscilloscope screen there is a grid so from that we can measure the full this length and the separation between the peaks so we know the frequency here we will be able to calculate as I showed you earlier the working formula we can calculate the magnetic field and then we have to plot along x axis the frequency of the RF signal and along the y axis the resonance magnetic field so from that plot we will be able to find out the land edge factor also calculating the slope of the curve so now let's do the experiment this is the full setup of electron spin resonance spectrometer this unit has the control for Helmholtz coil so you can send current from here then we have the arrangement for RF field so the frequency of the RF field can be adjusted with the help of this frequency and the phase of the X and Y signal as I showed you in the board can be adjusted with the help of this phase knob and the X and Y signal can be taken to this oscilloscope channel 1 and channel 2 for X and Y respectively okay and this is the Helmholtz coil and we have the RF coil here inside which the DPPH sample is kept so this RF coil gets the current from here with this cable and we can set the frequency here so let's do the experiment I am setting the frequency of the RF coil something like 13 megahertz So this is 13 megahertz and the Helmholtz coil gets the current from this these two connectors are here so we can set the current say we set the current something like okay 140 or so and phases we keep at the center and now I have to look for the signal so let's see how it goes okay this is xy so as I showed you in the whiteboard so the top trace yellow trace is our 50 hertz sweep and these signals are the signal for the electron spin resonance then what I have to do is I have for one full cycle I have four peaks so I have to adjust the phase to get them these two should merge these two should merge and for that I have to first go to the XY mode so if I go to the XY mode then I have 
the four peaks. So we have four peaks now. Then if we adjust the phase, then we can see that these two are getting merged. These two are again getting merged. So we are now left with only two peaks. So in x scale, we have the peaks at two different positions. Though along y axis, they don't match properly. That is immaterial for us. So now what we can do is uh, the experiment to study the magnetic field with the resonance frequency. So we have to measure what is the separation between the these two ends. That is the p value for us. And for that, we can adjust it like this. So on the grid, we keep these two peaks symmetrically about these two this vertical this vertical line so along this vertical line magnetic field is zero as we go away from the vertical line the field increases field increases and the peaks we are getting so the separation between the two ends that is p for us as i showed you in the whiteboard and separation between the peaks. This is 2q for us. So q means the separation from the midpoint till one of the peak. So p and q we have to measure. So for this particular experiment we have to keep the current fixed something like 150 milliampere or so and we have to change the frequency from some minimum to maximum something like now why I am getting the reading for 14.42 now if I change it then what happens is suppose I go to 15 okay so now the separation is changing again if I go to 16 then also it's changing so in this experiment we start from something like 13 megahertz and go up to 16 megahertz and what we find is the resonance field slowly increases so if we plot the graph like x along x axis we keep the frequency of the rf field and along y axis if we plot the resonance field then we will get a straight line curve because uh, as the separation between the two peaks increases with the increase of the frequency, this thing is happening. So, this is one technique you can get the G value, land G factor, with some other technique also. In that technique, what we have to do is we will keep the RF field frequency constant and we will change the Helmholtz coil current in steps of something like 30 milliampere. So we can do one thing, we can keep here fixed something like 16 and then we can start from here something like 110 the separation this. Then I can 141 so it has come down. Then if we change it uh, 172 it is again coming down 200 it is again coming down. So like this, we can fix the RF frequency and change the current. So in this case, if we plot a graph along x-axis, if we plot 1 by i and along y-axis q, the separation from the center to the peak. Then also from the slope of the curve, we can calculate the g-factor. And we have tested with this setup, G factor is matching very nicely. It's coming close to two. So let's go back to the board once again. So we have studied the electron spin resonance or electron paramagnetic resonance with the help of electron spin resonance spectrometer. And we have obtained the magnetic field as a function of resonance frequency. So this experiment as I showed you, 
during the experiment two types of data can be taken one is for variation of RF field frequency we can have the resonance field and in other case we can study the variation of 1 by i along x axis and q along y axis so in these two different techniques we can have the land g factor and we find both the results matches quite well with the value of g available in the literature so i hope you will be able to perform the experiment in the laboratory and the students will be very happy so thank you thank you for watching this video have a nice day